During the Attitude Era, no wrestler personified the Attitude attitude better than Stone Cold Steve Austin. One of the most popular wrestlers of all time, Steve Austin transformed himself from yet another stunning ringmaster into a stone cold champion in just under a decade. The rocket fuel behind the Texas Rattlesnake's trajectory to stardom? The Stone Cold Stunner. To set up the stunner, Austin begins by kicking his opponent in the small intestine. The small intestine is responsible for two things, absorbing nutrients and breaking down food. Austin's boot hits his opponent with so much force that the small intestine actually contracts to one sixth of its original size, making it difficult for his opponent to stay standing upright. But it's not only a question of where Stone Cold kicks you, but what his kicks are made of. And the reason his kicks are so powerful? Robot legs. June 23rd, 1996. Stone Cold beats Jake the Snake to win King of the Ring. Members of the WWF, what? WWE Universe weren't the only ones watching as Austin 316 was born. Austin 316 says I just whipped your ass. Austin's win also put him on the radar of the United States Army. The military's interest in exoskeleton technology was at an all-time high in the late 1990s. After decades of research, a fully functional robotic armored knee brace had finally been developed. And now the Army, led by Sergeant Slaughter, wanted Austin to battle test the prototype before That's it entered order. into mass production. That's an order. Now well, I can look at you, son, the only thing you've been ordering is a whole bunch of damn cheeseburgers. This hydraulic-powered titanium knee brace made Austin's kicks 17 times more powerful than the average human's. At more than 2,000 pounds of force per square inch, it hurts more than getting kicked by a female horse. After kicking the opponent's small intestine, Stone Cold grabs the neck at the seventh cervical vertebra, also known as the C7. This also happens to be the largest cervical vertebra in the neck region, making it the optimal cervical vertebra to grab. As Austin falls down, the opponent begins descending a split second later, but that's still enough time for maximum damage. When Stone Cold's tailbone hits the mat, his potential energy is at a maximum. Thanks to his six foot two frame, Austin begins converting potential energy into kinetic energy immediately after recoil, which is bad news for his opponent. When the opponent's jaw meets Stone Cold's shoulder, it gets pushed against the skull with 2,048.6 joules of energy, or 300,000 volts of electric shock, the equivalent of being hit with six stun guns. Even though the brain runs on microscopic electrochemical reactions, it cannot handle this much voltage in the skull at once. Therefore, it disperses the electric charge through the body. The end result? Uncontrollable muscular convulsions. We asked a certified electrician to explain just how deadly a stun gun can be. Well, when you get electrocuted, every organ gets affected. Muscles, uh, brain gets affected, yeah, right? The brain and the heart goes into shock and, uh, uh, and follows by the muscles. Uh, the body cells actually die off and they don't ever come back. The bones, uh, uh, nothing happens to the bones when you get electrocuted. I think uh, you can have electricity going through your body probably at least, you know, 10, 15 minutes until you're dead. Producing such an electric discharge also monumentally drains Stone Cold's overall energy. In fact, after a stunner, Steve Austin sees an 81% reduction in power conception in his body, leaving him with just enough energy density to get the pin, but not much else and so he immediately needs to rehydrate himself with ethanol and dihydrogen oxygen or face a total shutdown of his body. And that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so.
Support our real-life scientific research by clicking the links here or here.